Hey guys, it's Michelle. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And if you're new here, don't be a stranger. Go ahead and subscribe. I talk about luxury fashion and luxury shopping from the perspective of a former client advisor for Vuitton. So today's video is a tag video and I love doing these, they're fun. I love getting to know other YouTubers. It's a great community we have, so thank you so much guys for including me. And today I've been tagged by two different people. Fabulous Irene, that's the name of her channel. She's Irene and she's fabulous. And also um, by Joanne from Luxury in Moderation. So thank you ladies for including me. And today's video is about if you have to keep one item from each brand. So I did this video, a similar video a few weeks ago where if I were to curate a collection and pick like one bag from each brand. Now this video is opposite. It, I have to eliminate things from my closet and unlike other YouTubers, I actually don't have everything from every brand, but we'll try. This is a good one because it's not limited to handbags. We're also going to talk about jewelry and shoes, which I love too. And this will be easy because some of these brands, I might only literally have one thing. So super easy for me, haha. <laughs> now let's start with everyone's favorite brand is going to be Louis Vuitton. I actually do have quite a few items from Vuitton because I worked there and was able to score some good pieces from EOS. But if I had to pick just one, now, if I were gonna pick my most useful, it would be my new wave sandals. I absolutely love these shoes. They are so comfortable and so sexy. However, it can't be that because the one that I would pick is my Speedy 30. And this was actually inherited. This was my mom's and this was my mom's first Vuitton. And she got it somewhere like 1984. And I remember how proud she was of this bag. And uh, my brother and I would like kind of say, why are you going bowling? <laughs> or it's a doctor bag. But, oh, I've got some newspaper in here. I've got newspaper in here to keep it shaped. I'm gonna throw in too that this show is dedicated to my mom because today's November 3rd and to tomorrow, November 4th is her birthday. She would have been 77 years old, but she left us too early and she's up there celebrating in heaven. So thank you mommy for, uh, introducing me to Vuitton. She really is the one who introduced me to Vuitton. She's the Speedy. She also has the Saint Cloud. So the one I'm going to pick is the Speedy. Now, I really don't use this bag very much, but I just talked about its sentimental value. It is a handbag. I'm a crossbody girl. However, um, I do feel like everybody should own a Speedy. It is the iconic Vuitton. It is the iconic shape, it's recognizable, and of course it's in, it's in the monogram canvas. You can also get it in the damier canvas, but you know, the monogram, it's recognizable, and it really does elevate an outfit when you are carrying a Speedy. I discovered yesterday that it fits my water bottle, so I thought, well, maybe I need to use this bag more often. But the Speedy, and I've talked about this in other videos, it's still a good price for luxury, and it is timeless, and it's, think about this as the bag that you can pass on through generations. Next, let's look at Gucci. If you saw my previous video, I just bought a beautiful Gucci belt, but if I had to eliminate, she will go because the other item I also inherited is this beautiful 90s era Gucci handbag. Also in my mom's closet and she didn't wear these things very much at all. I was kind of surprised to see this and she expands like an accordion. I can keep quite a bit of things in here, but what I do like about it is that I can tuck in the shoulder strap and let's model hold this like a clutch or I can use it as a shoulder bag. It's a little too short to be worn cross body. I could do it if I needed it too, but it's more of a shoulder height. It's more of a shoulder bag. And I just love the shape of it. It's very 90s and classic Gucci. I love how you have the monogram and the stripes and the logo. So this really is one of my favorites when I carry her. All right, so next brand. See, this is, this is easy. I have one Chanel. It's my Chanel Mini in lambskin with silver hardware. I was very lucky to get this because as I understand, it's really hard to find. Um, I love that it's silver because it 
it really is a little more casual and matchable than if it were to be black with gold hardware. And as I see on the recent Chanel price increases that this is now $5,000 or close to it. So <laughs> thank God I didn't use my own money. So actually it was a gift from my toxic ex-boyfriend. So I pretty much paid for it in a way. It's like my trophy for putting up with such bull crap. Um, so let's just say I gained a lot of, of personal growth. <laughs> what not to do, what not to tolerate in my next relationship. And I got a beautiful Chanel bag. Um, so it can't all be bad. The the, the rotten boy can go, the Chanel can stay. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, can I just throw in a coat? I know it's not exactly exactly luxury, but I'm gonna throw in my coach bag. I don't know the name of this. People tell me from time to time and I just forget. But this actually was a, uh, something my mommy bought. I love that it has this giant coin purse inside. So you can stick stuff. Obviously I need to clean my bags. And it has a beautiful, almost Tiffany blue lining. That's another thing I really love about it. And it's not quite patent, but it's this beautiful shiny leather that can look quite dressy. But the first time I wore this, I, I was working at Zoll Technology and I put it on my desk and somebody complimented the bag and I said, thank you, my mommy gave it to me. And my coworker heard me and he goes, did you just say my mommy gave it to me? <laughs> I said, yes. And he goes, that's awesome. So that stuck. It's like, that's what I always say when people look at some of my bags. I'm like, my mommy gave it to me. <laughs> she loved handbags. Love, love, love. She didn't buy a lot of luxury, but she loved shopping for Coach, Ralph Lauren, Michael Kors. Um, and this is one that I feel is timeless and can stay in my closet. Let's see, what do we have next? Volgari is known for jewelry. I happen to have a handbag. I won it in a sweepstakes. Lucky me. And it did stay in my closet for a while. I didn't use it until after my mom passed, actually, because when I found all her luxury goods, or rather my dad gave them to me, I was like, she wasn't even using them, so I better use some of mine. Um, I wasn't sure about this bag at first because, like, I don't really carry brown. But then I got used to it. I like it. It's, a, it's more on the formal side, and by that, I don't mean, like, formal evening attire. I mean for, like... Um, Maybe like suiting, like if you're dressed a little bit on the more business side. So she is a beautiful bag and thank God it's my only from Bulgari, so she gets to stay. Okay, let's move to jewelry. This is my one and only Cartier and I'm okay to let it go. So I'm kind of the type of person once everyone has everything, I don't really need it anymore. So I have a Cartier love ring. And this is size four and a half. Oh, it barely fits anymore. But yeah, this was my wedding band. <laughs> I remember this, oh my God, it's stuck. I think it was $700. I might be able to find the receipt if I dig, um, but I remember it being $700. So I am strongly considering selling it, especially because it doesn't fit and I don't think it's something that my daughter would really want. I think this is gonna sell. I've thought about it because I know the value of it or like the retail price of it has doubled. But you know what? My next husband will buy me one or two or three and better ones. Um, so I'm not attached to it. I don't generally get attached to things. Okay, next, Tiffany. This piece needs some polishing because it's been in the closet. I used to love Tiffany, I still love Tiffany, but this is a little special to me because um, when everyone was buying Vuitton, I was in Tiffany and I was buying these pieces. This is the Heart Lariat. All right, so this is another one to eliminate because I have over a dozen Tiffany pendants and pieces. Um, some of them are sentimental. San Francisco Women's Marathon, they give away a Tiffany pendant, that's your medal and it's handed to you by a firefighter. So that's the whole reason to train for a marathon and run this race so you can get a Tiffany box handed to you at the end. So I love those, but I think the piece I love the most, and I should probably go back to wearing her, is the Heart Lariat. I remember purchasing her. She was either 125 or 150, had just come out, and my salesperson, his name was Bruce, and he was so sweet, because I was just a 24-year-old girl and um, he was always very friendly to me, you know, like I think when you're that young, you're not getting, you're not used to like, oh, people recognize me and want to give me good service. 
but he was like, I have something you would really like. And oh my God, I loved it. I think it was the last one or he had to order it because the only one left was like the display piece. I don't remember, something like that. But um, I checked a few years later and the price of it had gone up to like 250. But it's just, it's, it's so me. I like dainty pieces. I love hearts, I'm very girly. But I think what's special about this too was that that was at the time where I had just started working full time and it was like, you know, really cool to have extra money to shop. So there's a lot of pride in that because like once a month I could go to Tiffany and just like, oh, if I want something, I can buy it. As I say that I'm wearing my beaded necklace, this is the piece I wear the most right now. But I think, you know, like I said, they're sentimental to this, some pride to it, so I'll go back to wearing it because it's cute and it's unique. It's not something that everyone has. It's not something I see anymore. Now, we're, since we're still talking about jewelry, Tiffany used to have a another like branch to it. It was called Temple Saint Clair, um, and I I don't know much about it, but I think it was short lived. I'm not sure, but I do have this Temple Saint Clair necklace. So this. Brown used to be like attached to the wing of Tiffany and um, I just love this. It's so unique. It's 14 karat gold with a pearl and it's very simple, beautiful, dainty, just right up my alley. So that's a piece I happen to, um, I really love. She's not trendy. I mean, it's a little old fashioned, just like with the pearl and the delicateness of it. But I do love this necklace. So that's a Temple St. Clair. Drop me a note. If anyone has anything from that brand, let me know. So next on the jewelry list, also a brand that no one talks about too much. It's my Rado stainless steel watch. And this was also inherited from my mom. She never wore it. My dad gave it to me and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> it's a stainless steel. It's such a beautiful watch, guys. I really think this brand is underrated. I remember when I started wearing it, one of my friends like noticed it on my wrist and he was like, you're wearing a Rado, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't add any shoes, so shoes, I have Vuittons, but since I can only pick one Vuitton, it's going to be the Speedy. I have four pairs of Stuart Weitzman. Now, I wish I had bought Stuart Weitzman before. I was doing like the reasonable thing, what I thought was reasonable, because Stuart Weitzman would always be on sale at Nordstrom for $400 during the anniversary sale. And I always thought, well, that's too much, so I'm going to buy the boots that are $100 or $200. So I would buy those lesser brands. Still nice brands, but then I would find I would only wear them for a season because they just weren't as comfortable in the long run as I would hope they would be. So then the next season, buy new boots. And then when I started buying Stuart Weitzman, um, I was like, oh my God, I should have been buying this the whole time and it would have saved me a lot of money and foot pain in the long run. So the boots that I decide to keep are the reserves. This was a hard choice too because I also have the Highlands. I love those. I just acquired a shorter booty, which I love too. And then I have my flats. But the reserve, so it's a version of the 50-50. Something's different. I think the heel height is different, but I have them in suede. I happen to live in sunny weather all the time, so I can wear suede year round. Um, but these boots, I love the height. They come just above the knee and they look good with leggings or skirts. I don't wear jeans very much often at all. I'm I'm more of a leggings and skirts person, so this goes right along. This goes with everything I have. And um, it has a low heel height, uh, which is four centimeters. So it's bearable to walk in. I love my Highlands. Those I think are 75 centimeters. They're super sexy, but I just can't wear heels all day long. But with the um, reserves, I find that I can wear them all day long. The last luxury item I have to show off to you guys would be my only YSL piece. For now, I do have my eyes on some YSL, but look, I take baby steps and I started with this visor. You may have seen it and I think I debuted it in a live video. So yeah, now I can be totally Asian driving around my visor. If you're Asian, you totally know what I mean. <laughs> So actually, I discovered this visor from Rachel of Rachel Went Shopping. Thank you, thank you, girl. You influenced me to shop and to get this cute, cute YSL visor. Yes, I wear it golfing. Usually I wear it um, 
with a, a big ponytail going through the top of it, but it's great to keep in my car. Like I said, it's always sunny where I am. And how cute that it has, when you look down, you can see the Saint Laurent and the Saint Laurent shadow on my face. All right, so that's what I have for now, but I do have my eyes on um, some items in YSL. Do we count makeup? If we count makeup, I've got my one and only Dior piece, which is the Christmas set from last year. I actually bought this thinking that I would carry the case as a clutch, but this just feels like carrying a boxy makeup case. So I scrapped that idea, keep it for cosmetics, and I use it to carry the lipsticks, which is the purpose of the whole thing anyways. <laughs> So if you're to this point of the video, guys, thank you for letting me share, like, I mean, that's basically my luxury collection. <laughs> where everyone else's, where everyone else's video is like, keep one, keep one out of your five Chanel's. Like, that's pretty much my luxury collection. Happy birthday, this video is dedicated to my mom because, um, you know, I think her early death, like, made me realize, like, I have all these things, the Gucci bag, the Rada watch. She wasn't even wearing them. So it made me just kind of, change my mindset about things and like just go ahead and wear it and enjoy it because you cannot take it with you thankful to her and thankful to my luxury community that has made making these youtube videos so much fun you guys if you're to this point of the video thank you so much for being here my name is michelle don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and leave a positive comment it helps to grow my channel i really do appreciate you guys and i will see you in the next video Bye.